On today's Locked On Senators, it's a game day preview. The Sens are in the Sunshine State, hoping to avoid a season sweep at the hands of the Florida Panthers. And Tim Stutzla is back on the ice, but will he be ready for tonight's game? We'll discuss all that and more on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 1020 of the Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Piller up in the Blue Mountains, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. A reminder, you can also follow the show on social media. We're at Send Central on Twitter, LockedOn.Senators on Instagram. The show is free and available on all podcast platforms, including on YouTube, where we say hello and let you know that a like, comment, and subscription go a long way to helping the show grow. Today is Tuesday, April 9th, and Pilsy, the Florida Panthers are one of three Eastern Conference teams that have just slapped the Sen silly every time they've played. Yeah, I'm so excited that the Ottawa Senators match up against them tonight. This is going to go well. Not What could go wrong when the Ottawa Senators are up against the Florida Panthers? If only we had some recent game action to discuss between these two teams. I can't recall, though. <laughs> Cannot recall. Yeah, just wiped it from the memory. Don't know what you're talking about, Ross. Ironically, I'm going to be cheering for the Florida Panthers once the playoffs start. Oh, big time. Big time. But please, just just make it fun tonight. Now, Boko Imam is still in the mix. By the way, the Senators have turned their emergency recalls into complete recalls. Now, what does that mean? Other than the fact that they cannot recall anyone else, I'm not sure. Because each team gets four recalls after the trade deadline. But, of course, in case of emergency, break glass, call your minor league team. The four were used on Tyler Clevin, who has since returned to Belleville. Boko Imama, Yuri Smekal, and Zach McEwen. So we'll see what happens with those guys throughout the rest of the season. I guess they're in the lineup. Like This this is a bare-bones organization right now. They're stripping it right down. We had... We had Dominic Kublik. I know he missed last game, but two games ago playing the top six. Yeah. Top I mean, six. Four. Pinto had as many points in one game two weeks ago as Kublik has assists all season. Four. Yeah. Four. This is the Ottawa Senators are trying to finish this race and they're finishing it on fumes. Like there's no gas left in the tank. They're hoping they get one last little hill and uh, maybe some tailwind to give them some push here because. Ross, Saturday I, must win. Saturday is a must win. Yeah, we hope the hill uh, happens there. But Ross, what I've been doing is I've been taking screenshots of obscure lineups so that later on we can look back and be like, remember when this is how the Sens lined up? And I've done that. I think I did it like a week ago. And I was like, ooh, this is the obscure lineup we're going to look at. And then I did it again. I was like, this lineup is much more obscure than that last one. So I have like five lineups that I've tagged being like, we're going to look back at this and laugh. And it just gets funnier and funnier and funnier. I don't know when the punchline of this joke is actually going to set in. It's just still leading up to it. But this, the way this team looks on the ice, especially when you match them up with the Florida Panthers across the other side of the ice... It's a it's a joke. Well, when you look at 2021, speaking of old lineups, I know our guy Graham Creech from TSN 1200. He's been doing these as well. Okay, um, nice. You know that the season opening game in 2021, like the f- game that we went to, they won this game by the way over the over the Toronto Maple Leafs. Of course, Chris Tierney was the third line center. Logan Shaw was the fourth line center. The decor 
Shabbat Zub, Mete Zaitsev, and Nick Holden with Josh Brown. Yeah, that that decor is tough. Uh, I don't even. It wasn't that crazy. Chris Tierney being a third line center at that point, like he had just come off uh, a big year, right? That's the yeah, year he had, had thirty nine assists. And Chris Tierney, talk about uh, home openers. That guy seemed to score so often in the home openers, whether it was off his foot or what. But he was uh, he was a little good luck charm for that. Yeah, well, enough of Chris Tierney talk. Although it was hilarious to see him in the mix in that uh, five on five line brawl. Uh, the other week yeah I don't think he was supposed to be there I think that was one of those where he looks on the bench and he's like coach what am I doing out here him and Lazar were both out there weren't they yeah that's great they were amazing um so I mentioned off the top the senators there's three teams in the eastern conference that they have not been able to to beat one they'll get another crack at the boston bruins the senators are oh one and one against the bruins so far this season and the florida panthers they're oh two and one carolina's just beat the crap out of them you know right Uh, i know i was boots on the ground for that 7-2 loss on march 17th and ross it just that's one of those teams that's ingrained in my mind like i can't really think of an ottawa senators win against the carolina hurricanes like there's not there's Oh, I got one. I should have known the Sens Encyclopedia would have one. Let's hear it. No, the one that's during the Hamburglar run where um, it was <laughs> – it was what? Nine years ago, I got one. Nine well, years I, ago. <laughs> it's more so that I have that that's run hilarious. ingrained. I have that run ingrained into my head. But, wow. no, it was a 2-1 win in overtime at Carolina on March 17th. Wow. March 17th. My birthday. Nice. How do I not remember that one? Jeez. Kyle Turris. Unreal assist to Mark Stone between the legs. It was uh, it was sick. Nice. Go look up that highlight. Stone, the tourist back in the net. That is other sick. way around. Yeah. Well, the Ottawa Senators started off the season with a loss to the Carolina Hurricanes on the road. So that's one that's burned into my mind because we were hoping that that would go a little better. Yes. The Ottawa Senators this year, 0-3-0 against Carolina with a minus mm. 10 goal differential in three games. And obviously losing 7-2 doesn't help, but... Their goal differential against the Panthers is much worse. Their goal differential against the Florida Panthers this year is nope. But yeah, it is worse. Minus twelve. I was going to say I am. That's four goals, isn't it? Didn't you say minus eight? Minus ten. Oh, never mind. Two goals. Ottawa's only scored two goals against Florida. That is, uh, that's tied Three. for the least they've scored against any team. Now they have played one extra game against Florida, but do you know who the second team is? It's the Ducks, isn't it? It's the Anaheim Ducks. I knew it. God dang it. <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness. That's that's where we're at right now with the Ottawa Senators. And look, there is potential. I truly believe it. But my goodness, you have to just laugh because if you don't laugh, you'll cry looking at just how this season. There's, there's going off the rails, and then there's whatever we've watched through 77 games. Yeah. Yeah. 76 did i just age them a game here no no i didn't they're 77 games in thank goodness it's wild that this has has come to this point ross like i just i really did not see this downfall being so heavy this season it's been tough but we have each other we've got the citizens we will get through it it's nice as much as they still got washed, rinsed on that trade with the Brinket, at least they do have the fun coupon of a late first round pick. It's a fun coupon. Yeah, it is. It is, but that's it. And when we're sitting at the draft, we're going to be happy they have it. So or that's that's what I'm holding on to. Will they have it? My hot take, they're going to trade that. You're going to trade up or down? It will not be a draft-related trade it'll be oh. to acquire nhl talent Ross. okay interesting keep an eye out for that one we will keep an eye out throughout the off season and we will also have daily shows for you monday through friday right here locked on senators but, your team every day but ross they will trade that pick at the draft so that we can spend our whole time trying to find prospects that fit in that range for the senators like if they trade it too early and ruin that content for us yeah i'll never forget no, I'll never, never forgive them. The top 10 looks good. And the more I watch it, the more I'm like, you know what? You can draft six, seven, eight, nine. 
not going to make a difference at all. It would almost make it easier because then they'll be leaving less guys on the table that I'm like, ah, could it be them? Yeah, and I just hope, Ross, that this regime doesn't do the move where you and I are dialed in on like three players where we're like, it's going to be one of these three guys and then it's someone 25 guys down our ranking list. Yeah, and then we've got to pull oh. out the old elite prospects. Mm-hmm. You got to have that on hand with Sens drafts. Like we did a top 50 two years ago and they picked one guy and they picked the guy who was 36 on our ranking and they picked him 10th. That's... Yeah. That can't happen this summer. Got to take best player available. Well, we're forwarding our draft uh, notes to Pooley after. Remember? Correct. So yes, they'll have are. that on hand. I'm starting to warm up to Tij Aginla, by the way. Not with the first pick. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. I'm warming up to it. We know yeah. the, Sens are, the Sens love the Nepo babies. We got half the team full of guys who dad played in the NHL. This kid is going off right now. 11 points in six playoff games, eight goals. No, he's don't don't get it twisted. He's sick, but I don't know if he's the guy. He might be the guy, Pilsy. Okay. He's going to be right. moving up draft boards all over the place. He's an August birthday as well. Hey, if it comes with Jerome McGinley being uh, attached with some sort of job with the Sens, may, then I'll uh, I'll be more enticed because it would be great to get that guy in the mix. Hey, the dad's trip. You got Keith Kachuk and Jerome yeah. McGinley. They've probably gotten into some battles over the years. Oh, I'm sure. St. Louis and Calgary. Yep. Sixth overall is the highest that Aginla is rated in the draft by elite prospects. Okay. Craig Button has him 10th. So we're in the range, baby. Okay. All right. Lots to discuss about the draft as we near the sphere in Las Vegas. But, of course, we have a game day to preview. We'll get to that next. And Tim Stutzla skated this morning. We'll let you know if he's ready to play in tonight's game. That's all coming up next. You're listening to Locked On Senators, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Guys, it's almost playoff time in the NHL and the NBA. Baseball's in full swing. The Masters are right around the corner. So FanDuel is the place to go to place your bets on every game. They're the official online sportsbook partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. And for a good reason, the North America's number one sportsbook. And right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. So that's a new promo for FanDuel that you're going to want to jump on because you can bet on everything from slap shots into empty nets, home runs, slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, simple, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. Guys, check it out today. FanDuel, North America's number one sportsbook. All right, Pelzi, game day for the Ottawa Senators in South Florida. If your boot's on the ground, make sure to tweet them at us at Send Central. Flip on flops on the ground. It would be. It's a 7 o'clock Eastern start. The Panthers still have a chance to finish first in the division, but it is slipping away quickly. They only have four games left, and they are five points back. The Bruins on a heater. They've won four in a row, starting to pull away, whereas Florida, they got that huge win against Ottawa and couldn't keep it rolling or keep it rolling as they fell Mm -hmm. in overtime in their last game out. But... It should be at least an entertaining game when these two teams get together. We know there's always fireworks. We know that they like to get in the mix, scrum it up a little bit. The hit, Nico Mikola on Tim Stutzla. And Tim Stutzla is still out of the lineup and will not play tonight. Yeah, that's tough news, Ross, as uh, we were hoping at least to get Timmy a couple more opportunities. There's not much to cheer for in the season, but Timmy sitting at 18 goals. Would be nice if he could get that number up to 20 just to have a a better optic for your leading point getter. You want him to be at 20 goals. 
got to get to 20 goals. And there's still some opportunity left, right? Five, four games because he's definitely not playing tonight. So we're hoping he gets to that that number. Brady's just one goal away from tying his career high in goals. Like the Brady's an even player this year as well. That's something that he is uh, yet to do in his career. Um, well, maybe we'll reset on some uh, some milestone watch after the weekend with those last two games, Monday, Tuesday on the road. But um, yeah, it's really unfortunate that Timmy's still out of the lineup. Don't want to speculate on what it is other than the fact that it's an upper body injury. Um, Jacques Martin, just speaking to the media now, he says Timmy may be ready to play Thursday. I think you just rest him up and have him put on a show at home in that, in that Saturday game against Montreal, the team that hates him the most. I'd rather him go into that game feeling as good as he possibly can than force him to play a meaningless game in Tampa. Although my parents are going, so it's not fully meaningless. <laughs> yeah, it'd be good to get the win for your parents. But uh, yeah, I'm with you, Ross. I think you just leave him out. Let him enjoy the sunshine in Florida. Don't don't pressure him to play and then have him ready for Saturday. Because look, Ross, as long as he's playing the Montreal Canadiens, that's his best opportunity to get two goals. The Senators will dress the same lineup as they did against Washington, that 3-2 overtime win on there Sunday afternoon, evening. Those are always weird. The 6 o'clock starts are strange. 5 o'clock for me here, always strange. Uh, Jacques Martin, though, he's going with the same methodology as I am. Corpus Allo, just ride him. Yeah. I also don't think... Who, who dislikes... I shouldn't say dislikes, because... I'm sure they all like each other, good people, blah, blah, blah. DJ Smith and Matt Murray or Jacques Martin and Anton Forsberg? I, I don't think Jacques has much time for Forsberg's game. Well, referring to him as the other guy and saying the other guy doesn't have it on the on a back-to-back, that's not a great endorsement from your coach there if you're Anton Forsberg, unfortunately. Uh, but – D- yeah, DJ Murray was DJ Murray. DJ Smith was not a, a Matt Murray guy, as I don't think any Ottawa Senators fans were. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> but he's going with Corpus Allo again tonight. Huge. And I mean, I don't blame him because Forsey was, was not great in his last outing. Yeah, I mean, Cor- Corpy got pulled in his last start too, didn't he? No, he started up against uh, Washington. No, Florida. But- Right, 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 right. But before yeah. that, they had before each gotten pulled in their last game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not great. Not great. Not great at all. But Corpus Allo goes tonight. He won his last game, 20 saves on 22 shots. Would you look at that? An above 900 save percentage and a win for Eunice Corpus Allo. So he gets the start in goal. Boko Imama, he has to go at Mikola, right? Like that's kind of the way the, way the world. Well, that's what I was saying, Ross, but you, you countered with saying, well, what's the point of going after Mikola? You got to do what Matthew Kachuks said to the Sens and say, hey, you are go- you went after our stars, Tim Stutzla, superstar. We're not going to take a piece out of uh, Lombard or Mikola. We're, we're going for, for Barkov. We're going for Reinhardt. We're going to take a chunk out of your stars here. I think that's what they're going to do. Although, I mean... It's tough, though, Ross, to have that mentality when you're the Ottawa Senators mathematically eliminated and the Florida Panthers are are pushing for a cup run, and that's Brady's brother's team. And there is some incentive for the Ottawa Senators to hope the Florida Panthers do good with that uh, uh, the draft implication. If the Panthers win the cup, it goes from a fourth to a third. So maybe the Sens are like, hey, we didn't love what happened there, but you guys are cool. You guys are cool. No, but I don't want them to think that Florida's cool anymore. That's the problem that I've I've yeah, had with this team for a fair. long time. Matthew Kachuk shows zero respect to the Ottawa Senators. Hell, he he fought Jake Sanderson. He fought Jake Sanderson first yeah, career fight. Wild to think of. I totally forgot about that. Wow. Brady wouldn't. Brady hasn't shown a level of disrespect towards Florida. No. And I would like him to. I would like him to go out there tonight. And let Florida know at least that this team has an identity and isn't going to be pushed around. And it just feels like yep. feels like he lets them off the hook quite a bit. Now he was trying to get Mikola going all all of the last game. Those two played together, but again, go go after whoever Matthew Kachuk's best friend is on the team. Go after him, unless it's Ryan Lomberg. Then who cares? Let him let him spin <laughs> his wheels. Yeah, 
But I think it's Boko that's going to, and it's going to be a stage type fight. And it's not going to be what I'm looking for. I'd rather them just go out and do the old Chris Neal first shift. Don't come off the ice until you run someone into the boards. Yeah. And then just see what happens from there. And like Ross, like this is the goon squad for the Ottawa Senators. You, you've got Boko, you got Zach McEwen, like Casty, like you've got guys that have the size and strength to take care of business here. So if there's one, th- you might not have a roster that's offensively talented. So lean on the strengths that you do have with this roster. And that's, they should just be a goon squad out there. <laughs> Right? Like- Senators, Panthers tonight. Feel the excitement. Seven o'clock start. We'll have the postcast to be a little bit later. 10 30, we're aiming for for the postcast tonight after the Senators take on the Panthers and mercifully end the season series. Yeah. But can they do it without getting swept? We'll have that conversation next. We'll look at the tank watch, we'll look around the league. Playoff battles are heating up. The Senators are nowhere near it, but it is a great time to be a hockey fan. That's all coming up next. You're listening to Locked On Senators, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Sleeper. Look, the Ottawa Senators season is coming to a close. Regardless of where they are in the standings, I want to remind you that you could win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for all Daily Fantasy sports, not just hockey. Because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. You can also play uh nba mlb college football and nfl when it gets back going you can check out their group chat in the app you can let your buddies know hey i got a big week coming up and entries can be made in under one minute all you got to do is pick studs like brady like timmy like drew like jake sanderson and will they record more or less than their sleeper projection stats for goals assists saves plus, minus, and more in any given game. So to win 100 times your bet on Sleeper, you got to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Sense fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper. So start paying attention and get your picks right so you can start winning big. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. Check it out today, guys. Sleeper. All right, Pilsy. Final segment here on a game day for the Ottawa Senators. Want to give a little stick taps out to Senators Assistant Equipment Manager Ian Cox. I don't know if you saw on the Senators Communications Instagram, but they've made some t-shirts for Coxie. I'm sure there's going to be some money on the board, hopefully going to the training staff for the end of year party, all that, because Ian Cox is working his 1,000th game tonight in the National Hockey League. Those are the guys who, they're they're the sandpaper of the league. They're the guys who, who get everything, make sure everything's nice and smooth, and that these players can just focus on what they're doing on the ice. So huge respect to everyone who kind of works in the, what do you call it? The, keeps the wheel turning is what I'm trying to say behind the scenes in the NHL. Yeah. It's incredible what these guys do. I, I remember like back when uh, for the outdoor games, when they used to do like the 24 seven following the teams around as they led up to the outdoor games and you got a peek at what the equipment managers do it's nuts how hard these guys work. They don't get to see their families a lot. Like they're so busy with the team on the road and stuff. So uh big shout out to those guys as Ross, I, I can say pretty confidently that is a job I would not be able to do. I don't think I, I don't think I have what it takes to be an equipment manager. No, this late nights, you get off the plane and you go right to the rink. You're unloading gear. You're making sure everything is spick and span. Uh, for the players when they walk in in the morning. But it's a a job that doesn't get a whole lot of notoriety, but these guys, the the league wouldn't run without them. So shout out to Ian Cox. Shout out to everybody who works in that capacity. It's uh, truly remarkable. And us fans, we appreciate how you guys work day in, day out 
and especially with the Senators, right? Because these guys live and die with every game too. So they're also like, that's a thousand games for Coxie. I wonder how many wins he's got in there. It's got to be 50-50, if not a little less. So yeah. good on them. Perseverance, all that. Love it. Good stuff. Now, I'm hesitant to do a tank watch because it's not that fun to do. But I think now that we're in the last week of the season-ish, we should be kind of keeping track of what other teams are doing around the league. And with a big schedule tonight, there are 13 games on the NHL schedule, and we've narrowed it down to basically two teams. We want Montreal, and we want Seattle to win as many games as possible down the stretch. Uh, false. Who else? We do not want Montreal oh. to win their game up against the Ottawa Senators Saturday, April 13th. And I'm I'm an idiot. I'm looking at the other game. I just did the same thing as I. I need to sleep at some point. Um, the Arizona Coyotes are who we're looking at. Okay, I I thought that was wrong as well. So yeah, let's. Uh... You know what? If we're wrong, it's better to know right away than have it sit and not exactly. realize. So there's my spin zone there. The Arizona Coyotes. Who? Oh, by the way, here here's something that we can talk about. Did you see that the owner of the Utah Jazz just happened to put a post yesterday just happened to put out if we were to get an nhl team what should we call it hey fair just they sh- testing the waters it'd be pretty funny the salt lake uh, the salt lake city coyotes like <laughs> keep the name yeah well hey we we've seen that like the the north stars just became the stars so they they kept that tradition going there's one other team that we need to win. And I want to triple check before Let's I say see if you get this right. Calgary. Oh, good job. Yeah. Because Calgary they, has one more point. Than, but they have one more point than Ottawa. And they've been so losing right games here. They're two and eight in their last 10. They've lost three in a row. Smarten up, Calgary. Yeah, figure it out. Come on. Figure it out. It would kind of be cool. Didn't that happen? Was it last year before Ottawa traded their pick? I can't recall, but where it it was like a run of Canadian teams. I like that. I hope it goes Montreal, Ottawa, Calgary in the draft. That'd be sweet. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah, I like that. It's the little things, Pilsy. Yeah. But yeah, is Salt Lake City going to have a team on opening night next year? No, 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 no. You don't think so? No, no way. It takes it takes time to do that. If that's like, why you're already they're... asking. Yeah, it takes more time than that to do that. Uh, maybe if it was announced, then they'd be ready to go the season after, but I don't think so. We're cheering for Washington tonight as well. Caps taking on the Red Wings in Detroit. I'm with they you. They are one point back of the Red Wings right now with five games left. Could you imagine the Red Wings are 4-4-2 four, four, and two in their last 10 games? And still sitting in a wild card spot. Yeah, that'd be sad. Be sad. I know. Couldn't imagine being a part of it. Maybe next year. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I would actually maybe really next. like to be a part of it now that I think about it. It'd be so cool. It'd be sweet. Tomorrow is a game day for the Belleville Senators. Huge game coming up tomorrow against the Toronto Marlies. Now, the Marlies do have a game, or they have the same amount of games left. Belleville and Toronto have more games left than anyone else in their division and they are currently just three points up. So the dream of just sneaking into the playoffs, there might actually be greater things ahead. If Ottawa can or Belleville can get win over Toronto, they'd only be one point back with five games remaining. So huge game tomorrow night for Belleville. Ross, are you doing everything in your power to avoid talking about tonight's game? I don't really have much more to say. I thought we already kind of covered it. Tonight's game? <laughs> what? We we haven't got into the Panthers or the lines at all. Well, we didn't make or lines. locked on or lookout players. We didn't even make lines. <laughs> yeah, true. We did. We did forget to do that. Uh okay. Well, I guess we'll just uh we'll just do a bare bones game day preview of this. Do you have do you have a lookout player, Ross? My game day preview is please. Don't get embarrassed and please make it make it a dog fight. Don't have it the cats against dogs like it was up in Canada. 
Well, yeah, I mean, the Florida Panthers, Panthers are a member of the cat family, uh, although Brady's got that dog in him. Yeah, well, he needs he needs his his friends to come along with him for the ride because it was almost embarrassing the way it was just him playing in that game. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I do have a lookout player, Ross. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm going to be looking out for Alexander Barkov, the captain of the Florida Panthers. This guy's been hot. Seven game point streak, five goals, five assists, 10 points in that stretch. Now, one thing that I thought was interesting was no power play goals there, only one power play point. So at least he hasn't been that hot with the man advantage. But Barkov is a guy where I feel like he kind of gets lost in the shuffle in Florida, kind of the classic most underrated player in the league. But I, I feel like it still kind of rings true. And, uh, with the Reinhardt story with Matthew Kachuk coming in. Um, I feel like he gets lost in the shuffle there a bit. So I'm going to be looking out for Barkov here. And who's your locked on player? My locked on player is going to be Jacob Chikrin. Uh, he's been heating up offensively, which is nice. He had that really great play to set up the uh, Casty goal in the other game, but it's not the offense I'm going to be uh, locked on to, Ross. It's going to be the defense. Uh, still a couple errors in the defensive zone. Still the decision-making don't really love. So Jacob Chikrin is probably going to be the most pivotal piece for the Ottawa Senators this offseason. Whether they decide to trade him or decide to keep him, I think the direction of this team will hinge on their decision with Jacob Chikrin. So I want to see him continue to play well uh, down the stretch or at least continue to improve his play down the stretch here all right i'll go locked on to brady kachuk just a nice easy storyline here with the the panthers but more importantly i want to see brady set a career high in goals this year i've been following that for a while he obviously has been popping off recently so he's at 34 just one off his uh, tying his career high so i want to see that it'd be great to see drake batherson get to 30 goals he's three three away from that so those are two guys on the top line that i'll be watching closely tonight and uh, Shane Pinto, I mean, I thought he played his best game in the last while in uh, in the last game against Washington. I thought he'd struggled in about the week before that. But again, playing probably higher in the lineup than anybody would have liked with the top yeah. two centermen going to camp out. Um, but uh, I'll be watching his two wingers tonight, Drake and um, and Bath, <laughs> Drake and Bath, Brady, Drake and Brady. Nice. Yeah. I mean, that line definitely is the the best line for the Sens right now. And yeah, Ross, if you're Shane Pinto and their camp, they're probably stoked that they've uh, held off on contract talks because now you're getting some sample size as a first line center for this team. So very interesting to see what's going to happen there. And let's check in on old friend Vladimir Tarasenko, who still is trying to find his footing. I would say it would be a nice way to put it. Uh, with the Florida Panthers. like He's popped off in a couple games, some big multi-point games, three points against Toronto, uh, stands out big. I think he had another three-point game in there as well. Starting to heat up, he's on a four-game point streak, though. Six points in his last four, or sorry, seven points in his last four games. Um, but still a minus player, and I think probably someone who's trying to find where where his best fit in. When you come in with the team like that, who's who's got so many guys in the proper roles, I could yeah. see how it might not be the easiest for a guy to come in. But with Carter Verhage out, you could almost think that he would just naturally kind of go right into that position. But hasn't been the smoothest transition, but he also has more points in, uh, what, 15 games with Florida than Casty has all year in Ottawa. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'm pretty sure even if it's not clicking on the ice for Vladdy, I'm pretty sure he's a pretty happy guy all around being there in Florida now. Yeah, well, hopefully the Sens got their vitamin D yesterday, got to sit out in the sun for a little while because it's game day. Senators, Panthers, feel the excitement, seven o'clock puck drop. And I want some final thoughts from you today, Pilsy. Final thoughts for me is let's see, Ross. I know this is hard to do, but let's see if the Ottawa Senators can make it to their third shot without allowing a goal. Let's that's that is tonight's big goal. That's that's the big prize we're going after now. That is where we're at, Pilsy. That's where we're at. It's been four straight games that they've allowed a goal on the first two shots. Yep. Four straight games. My goodness. Senators, second last road trip of the season. They already got one win. 
They'll play in Florida tonight, Tampa on Thursday. They'll come home for a final home game of the season against Montreal and then go out for a Monday, Tuesday, back-to-back at New York, at Boston against the two top teams in the Eastern Conference. Lord, have mercy on us. This Senators stretch right now tonight, they're playing their 16th game in 29 days. That is more than a game every other day, and it will continue. Through the rest of the season, it's been a heavyweight schedule. It's just been every single night, sometimes every other night. It's uh, I can see why the players are exhausted, why the fans are exhausted. I get it. This off season, I'm already like excited for the off season. Not not so we don't have to watch the games, but because this is where it will turn from a Pierre Dorian team mm-hmm. to a Steve Steos team. The only player that wasn't a Steve Steos or that was a Steve Steos acquisition is Boris Kachuk. That's it. That's the only player. Well, no, 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 no. Jameson Reese and Wyatt Bongiovanni. National League. National League. But they did get those prospects for uh, pennies down there in Belleville. We'll be following Belleville as well. We'll get to a game day preview of that on tomorrow's LOSP. But as we mentioned, we will have the postcast for you tonight about 1030 live on YouTube. And then after it will be available wherever you get your podcast. Please be a friend. Tell a friend these times. Yeah, sends fans. You might be feeling disconnected. It does still go a long way to helping the show grow. If you put us on in the background, you put us on each and every day and steal your friends, your partners, your family members' phones, and make sure to smash the subscribe button everywhere, not wherever you get podcasts, everywhere that you get podcasts. For today, we say goodbye. Thanks so much for listening and watching the show. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you in the postcast. For Brandon Pillar, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators Podcast, your team every day.